The number you have dialed has been changed. What you doing? So I started out by just marking the plywood and drawing out where I need to make my cuts. So for this project I'm using about half a sheet of ply and three pine boards. So I just finished marking up all the plywood and now it's time to cut it. Also, in case you're interested in the workbench I'm using, I actually built it myself. It's super nice to have big surface table saw since inside of it, so go check that video out. I just finished cutting the plywood pieces to their correct width. Now I'm just going to cut them to their correct length. So I just finished making all the cuts for the plywood and I was right here I was trying to leave three quarter inch space so that I can add a trim piece to that and as you can see Wait a second It fits it's literally seamless it is perfectly flush so I'm pretty happy with that Alright guys I just spent the last like 10 minutes marking just this one board I'm trying to make sure that I get it perfect because like <laughs> it's expensive wood. Alright guys, hopefully I don't mess up the wood. So guys, I uh, I made a slight mistake. Um, my table saw fence wasn't flush, and so now the these two pieces here and here they're not completely the same width. So now I'm just gonna like run them through one more time, make it a tiny bit smaller. Now that I know that the fence is flush, that both of them will end up being the same width. These pieces right here are going to be used as the base of the entertainment center and right now I'm just marking out where I should cut on the bandsaw. So now that I just cut those four pieces out with the bandsaw, I'm just going to start assembling them together with the nail gun. So now that I have all the four pieces attached for the base, I'm just going to go over them with a router on the edge and give them a nice little trim. Also, I thought it would be better to attach them all together before I did the routing 
just because I thought it'd end up being more flush in the end. So like all I've done now is I added these two little strips here running on the sides and I made them sink in three quarters of an inch so that the plywood can sit in here and sit flush with the trim. I'll show you all that in a sec. This is my favorite thing. Is whenever it's like so tight that you have to use a hammer to put it in. And look at that guys. Um, that's the base of it. And now I guess I'll just put the sides up in the other trim pieces. Oh my, this looks very nice. Super duper flush. Whoa. Right now I'm going over all the edges with 60 grit sandpaper just to try and round the curves a little bit more. What's up guys, so right now I'm just attaching the sides to the bottom. No videos at me doing that. Alright, so I attached the sides to the bottom and now I'm just adding the two little strips that I cut out earlier in between. I ended up just putting wood filler in that one little spot. Alright, so I just put like the body in the frame, but like I can't even explain how mad I am. And I messed up right here, it looks like crap. All right guys, so I also went ahead and just put the side pieces on and it looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna make the top part. So these two pieces that I just cut out, um, these are the breadboard ends for the top. That's what I'm going to do for the top. Uh, I think it would look pretty cool. And now I'm just going to make the horizontal pieces. Alright, so I just cut out the horizontal pieces for the top. And now I think I'm just going to glue them together. Oh my gosh. All right guys, so I finally finished gluing. And as you can see, I put like a a smaller strip in the middle. And I think that looks really good. And then with the breadboard ends, this will be nice. What's up guys? So, it's day 2 and today I'm just going to start working and focusing on the cabinet doors. Here I'm just drilling pocket holes to connect the four frame pieces to each other. Alright, so I just finished up with a frame of one of the doors, and I'm not going to lie, it looks very good. Everything's super flush, and I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm using a quarter inch thick rabbiting bit for my router. And basically, I'm just going to go around the interior of it to create a ledge for the back panel to sit on.
So since the router leaves the corners of the frame curved, I'm just going to head over to the bandsaw and kind of cut off the corners. And now I'll simply just glue the back panel into the frame. Alright, cool. So this is all glued down and now I'm just going to wait for it to dry. I right, guess so. The glue just finished drying on the top piece, and I'm just excited to see how it looks like after I oil it and sand it. So you can buy your own hardware for the sliding doors, but I just decided to build my own. It's fairly simple. So I just started with a bar and drilled four screw holes in it to attach it to the main piece. If you can't tell, right now I'm just creating points to see where I need to drill. So to get the wheels for the hardware, I thought it was the most simple to just cut open some pulleys with my grinder. After I get the wheels out, I just attach them via nut and bolt to a strip of metal. Alright guys, so I just finished the first piece and it looks pretty good. And now I just have three left to go. Alright guys, so I went ahead and painted the metal pieces with this spray paint right here. It looks really nice. Before oiling the top part, I just added this wood conditioner to help it spread more evenly. The oil itself, I'm just using plain old Danish oil. I think it looks really good. So here, I'm just finally attaching the doors to the cabinet and adding the shelf in as well. As you can see, for the bottom part, I applied three coats of charcoal paint and then waxed it afterward. Missing someone, missing someone